And with that, I believe we are recording. I'm not 100% sure. Let me just check something. I got a note that you were recording. Good, that's great. Marvy, hello everyone. I'm Joe Flick from the Montana State Library and I'm here with Jenny Stapp, our state librarian and also Jessica Edwards, who is our data coordinator. A new position at the State Library and it is April 10th and we're still in the middle of a pandemic but we're going to proceed because we're all social distancing right mm -hmm. so I just want to remind you that we do record these website chats um, and they're all posted to a showcase in Vimeo you can always uh, check I'm, I'm I've started putting the links to um, our recordings in the event in Aspen. So if you miss one of our events and you go to Aspen and just find the event, you'll see the link to the recording in the description of that event. Um, hopefully we'll all remember to keep doing that. It's kind of a new thing, but I think it makes it easier for you to find specific recordings. So you can always catch these. We usually have, a, I make a real effort to make sure Jenny's um, website chats, the recording goes up mid-afternoon it takes me a little bit of time to get everything done for that recording to be ready for you to view but uh, we try to do that right away so because a lot of what she covers is pretty newsy and the lie noticed a lot of people watch it over the weekends i see a lot of people tuning in on saturdays to catch up on the website chat so that's always an option and just a quick update on some training activities you may have noticed uh, earlier in the week tracy uh, send out a note that we have officially postponed the Director's Institute until August 17th and through the 20th. I was just on the phone this morning with our facilitator, Andrew Sanderbeck, and one of the things we were talking about is a webinar series that we're going to license from him for May and June. And so he's sending me a, a list of topics. Tracy and I will pick a few things. There'll be a webinar a week. These will be live only webinars for Montana librarians only. And um, this is a service that we're, we're purchasing from Andrew and I think it will be well worth your time. So please set aside uh, Wednesdays at 1030 in the morning and um, for those and we'll be back in touch with specific information real soon. You'll also probably notice that the Montana Library Association, since they were not able to hold their conference this month, has instead selected a handful of present presentations for a webinar series that your state library is hosting for them. So they've organized this content and selected the presenters and we're hosting. And so those can be found. Um, look for a, a email in Wired from Debbie Kramer for the information. And I am getting those posted to Aspen. Yes. I think I've got two of them. Next, next week's are posted to Aspen and I will hopefully get the rest of them posted today. And then I just, this is the first announcement of this, um, but you'll hear more from Amelia very soon that we're going to be licensing a webinar with Kathy McMillan on uh, sign language for story times and she'll be focusing on signs for feelings, which should be really um, appropriate for uh, the kinds of books that our librarians are using for this time with kids, especially for their um, virtual story times. But of course, this will be useful for, for uh, summer reading programs. Hopefully those will um, go on. We're, we're still hopeful that things will be a little better by the summertime. So I think that will be a pretty neat um, webinar. So be looking for information about that or just put in uh, in your calendar right now for May 6th that I say 1 p.m. I'm not I'm not really sure that's the right time. I, I was looking at an email. Well, I'll, I'll double check that. But that's um, that's some of the training that we have planned for you. Of course, there's a lot of people ramping up training right now um, as we have so many people stay, staying at home. And I'm seeing a nice bump in people applying for certification. So if you want to do that and are experiencing any problems, I just want to remind you that you can contact anybody at the State Library for help with Aspen on how to enter your credits and apply for certification. We're all eager to help you with that. So today we have an update from the State Library Commission meeting that was held recently. And then Jessica is here to talk to us about 
what we're doing with all that data that we're always collecting from you guys. And so I'm going to just turn things right on over to you, Jenny. Great. Thanks, Joe, and thanks everybody for joining me. Um, just a, a few updates from the State Library Commission, and I wanted to be sure and uh, put this in context with some guidance that we received from the state of Montana. Of course, largely the work of the State Library Commission, as well as all of your boards, has to be conducted through the state's laws around open public meetings and the ability of our community members to have the ability to witness and participate in our meetings. And the, the guidance that we have received from the Attorney General is that given our ability to provide online access, online forums to uh, public meetings is limited, that we should therefore try to limit the number of public meetings that we're holding and be really cognizant of the content of the agendas so that we're limiting the amount of action that's required at this time um, so as not to discourage public participation on matters that are of real importance. And you can see that reflected in the agenda for the commission meeting from April. We'd had a lot longer commission meeting planned uh, when we were planning to hold that meeting at the Library Association Conference and indeed a lot of you who like to attend that meeting uh, so instead, right now and, and through the duration of the pandemic, while we're sheltering in place, you're going to see uh, shorter commission meetings that are really focused on key action items only and limiting the agenda items that might require some, some greater public uh, communication and public discourse. So uh, at the April commission meeting, uh, one of the, the first points of discussion was actually around the Director's Institute and a request for some trust funding to help with some of the activities planned for that Director's Institute. And, and uh, with the, the need for sheltering in place and social distancing in mind, the commissioners expressed real concern that we were continuing planning for the Director's Institute, even though at that time we knew that there was a, a likely chance that the event would be postponed. The, the commission didn't want to give the impression that they were taking action that might be contrary to public health guidance and um, contrary to the, the social distancing directives that we've heard. So they actually tabled that agenda item, declined to take action on it. Subsequently, of course, as Joe just said, the Director's Institute has been postponed um, and I imagine that the commission will revisit that agenda item at their June meeting um, in order to accommodate what we hope will be an August Directors Institute. Um, it's, it's been a real point of discussion amongst the State Library staff and the State Library Commission about the kind of direction that we're giving to public libraries in terms of the services that we continue to offer and whether or not uh, libraries are open and closed. I just want to reiterate that from the State Library, we do support local libraries' decisions about the services that you're offering, including the need to uh, sh shutter your physical facilities at this time. Um, but we don't want to give the message that uh, libraries are closed. We want to continue to give the message that uh, libraries continue to be in service to Montanans. And I think importantly, part of that message is to all of us that we as a library community are here to support one another. Uh, one of the reasons why we hesitated to postpone the Director's Institute is that uh, we were holding out hope and wanted to continue to hold out hope that, that this pandemic might be shorter lived. I think we all continue to hold out that hope um, and, and um, to that end, look for opportunities to continue to uh, at, think about the future and when we can come together and, and um, be physically connected with one another again and in the meantime looking for those opportunities to, to come together as we are today to bridge that kind of social distancing. Jenny, I do have a poll um, that we that we talked about and um, that asks, and I can put that up now if it's appropriate, about sure. um, what the status is of our libraries that are here today. So we're gonna um, launch that right now. 
and, and this is the first time I've used this feature in Zoom, so hopefully you can see it. And I actually can see how many people have, the percentage of people that have voted. So cool. yeah, so you should be able to click on, on the, as many of these options as is appropriate. So, so how has your library adapted to the crisis? Do you guys all see this? I see it. Good. Excellent. A little to read, um, I can, oh, so some people are offering curbside pickup. We're seeing reference by phone um, and no services available also. That is some, um, one of the responses. If you scroll on down, there's a second question. And that is, when do you expect to reevaluate your status? And I see um, people are reevaluating weekly, some every two weeks. Uh, about half of you have completed the poll, so we'll give this a few more, a little more time. Right. Um, at the end of the governor's shelter in place directive, you'll reevaluate, re and um, at the next scheduled board meeting. Um, Looks like, let's give people a few more, another 30 seconds or so. Um, and let me go back up to the top of the poll just to see. I don't know whether or not we can share this like we used to with go to training. So I'll, we'll see when we end the polling. This is like I said, we're checking this all out. It looks like most people, 78% um, of the respondents so far are offering reference by phone. Um, have redirected staff to other project projects. There's 39%, 56% are directing staff to more online professional development. That I will say that I'm glad about that. And um, and I think we'll just give this a few more seconds. About three quarter, about two thirds of you have actually completed the poll. So, okay, let me end that and we'll show what we've got. Okay, it does give me a chance to share results. And you should be able to see this now? We do, yes. Great. All right, so now um, I'm, I'm sure our data coordinator is salivating over this, but um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we can kind of get an idea from this group, the, the, the 25 or so of you, um, that a lot of people are some about a 39% are evaluating, reevaluating your status weekly, and 39% are just going to wait till April 24th if the, to see if the, at the end of the governor's shelter in place directive. And then it looks like reference by phone is very much a common thing, and directing staff to do more professional development and redirecting staff to other projects. And there are some layoffs of staff, as you can see, one out of our respondents, of our 18 respondents, said that. So I will stop sharing if everybody's had a chance to look. Thanks, gives, you an idea, gives you an idea of where everybody stands. A couple of the other activities at the State Library that have somewhat been interrupted by all of this relate to the process for gathering public comment for the public library standards. We had planned uh, some extensive engagement at the Library Association Conference as well as at Federation meetings. And with those being postponed or not happening, we're looking for other opportunities to continue to solicit feedback about the current draft of the public library standards. We're continuing to seek that feedback. We have a survey that's opened and linked from our website. Um, maybe we can get a, a link to that in the chat box as well. Um, knowing that we're going to have limited opportunity to engage with you at the upcoming Federation meetings, we are going to plan some drop-in sessions for people to have a chance to share comments about the draft standards. We'd like to get any comments that people have by about the middle of May. Uh, we've gotten some good feedback to date and we're going to ask our task force that's helping us draft these standards to go back and review the comments that we've received and make any revisions to those standards before the June Commission meeting. Um, and then I want to remind all of you that uh, if this timeline holds, and it, it may be fluid given the current situation, um, once the Commission is ready to accept a draft of the standards, that again kicks off the administrative rules process 
which is the process by which we adopt those standards. And that also requires a public comment period. So I want to just reiterate that even though the, the public comment process right now has been certainly interrupted by the, the situation that we find ourselves in, there will still be ample opportunity for you to share your feedback about the standards as we go forward, um, not just this spring, but over the summer and into the fall as well. So uh, look for information from myself and Tracy about those drop-in sessions, further information probably at your June commission meeting, and then of course more information as the administrative rules process opens up. Um, I also shared with the State Library Commission a brief update about the legislative study for the State Library funding, the House Bill 633 study uh, that's ongoing. The committee was to have met in about the third week of March. Uh, that legislative hearing was postponed during, due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, some legislative hearings are being held uh, to limited degrees, but the legislature is also trying to figure out how to comply with open meeting laws in and use of online technology. So that meeting has not yet been rescheduled. We anticipate right now that it might be rescheduled the first week of May. Uh, and at that point in time, that committee will, will evaluate a couple of different documents prepared by legislative staff describing different kinds of options for funding for the state library. So not a lot up, of update there given the current kind of situation. Um, one other quick update before I introduce you to Jessica Edwards. Um, you may have heard that the CARE Act, the Federal Stimulus Act passed by Congress included $50 million for libraries to be administered by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Some amount of that funding is going to come through the Grants to States program, which is the formula grant program through which we receive our library development funding from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. I know that IMLS is currently evaluating how best to distribute those dollars. They want to try to do so in a way that, it, that gives some amount of base funding to all states and then some amount of per capita funding to the states, which is very similar to the current formula that we have for our, our regular grants to states program. So I don't yet know exactly how much money we anticipate receiving in Montana. I'm very anxious to find out. I hope to know uh, any day. And we are actively planning for how we might use some of those funds as well as some unspent funds that we have in the state library budget, given the lack of travel and other circumstances right now. Uh, there's sort of three priorities that we're considering. Um, the first is some kind of online summer reading options to help you uh, manage summer reading uh, and, and um, recording reading activities online. Uh, the second option is some ability to extend broadband services to your community members, perhaps through a hotspot lending program. You probably saw an email from Tracy to Wired yesterday with a couple of quick questions to you about your interest and ability to manage that kind of program. Your response to those questions will be very helpful as we evaluate what kinds of service we can potentially offer. And then third, with any available remaining funds, just putting as much of that funding as we can into e-content like Montana Library to go. So more information to come as we uh, find out more about any kind of available funding that might exist. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop and ask if there's any questions. I know that Joe's managing the chat, so if you have any questions. Um, pause here and, and take any before introducing Jessica. Just a comment that I apologize. I put March as the last commission meeting when of course it was April 1st. <laughs> I was April thinking Fools. it was <laughs> it was last week and I was thinking oh last week was March. <laughs> yeah. So um, and, and Tracy let's see if we could get that the link to that survey in the chat box. I thought you might have that handy. 
um, for the um, mobile for the hotspot question. Me too. I actually put it in already. So oh, you did. It should be there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh yes, I see it now. No, I don't actually. Mm. Do I others? see the library development consulting standards one. Uh, Joe, are you talking about? What, are you talking about the mobile hotspot survey? Yeah. Is that just oh. a response to your email or? Yeah, that I sent directly to public library directors. Oh, okay. Because we just Great. want a one per library response. Sorry for the confusion. Um, no oh, that's and okay. I, not seeing any other comments in the chat box. Okay, great. Well, uh, I'm very excited to introduce Jessica to you. I think most of you know her because she's worked at the State Library for, what, about three and a half years now, Jessica? Um, but last fall, she took over a new role that we created, one of our data coordinator. Um, so her job now is to help us look at all of the various kinds of metrics that we collect or that we can collect to really help us tell the story of the work of the State Library as well as libraries around the state. And one of the immediate questions I had for her was, how can we talk about the impact of COVID-19 on our services and and she really took that direction to heart and has been thinking a lot about the individual services that we offer and how they've been impacted um, as well as other kinds of, of data and metrics that she's been working on so jessica i'm really happy to have you joining us today and i think we'll turn it over to you sure let me share my screen here really quick Oh wait, Joe, it says I can't share a screen while you're sharing. Let's see. Can you hear me still? Yep. Okay, there we go. All right, so. Can everybody see my screen that I popped up right here? Sure can. Okay, so um, we've recently been working on the best way to show um, how some of the services here at the State Library have been impacted by this. Um, so there is a draft dashboard out there um, that I'm just going to show off a little bit here today. So let me just go through the steps on how to find it really quick. Um, on our website, we have the About the Library section. And then under Publications, there is a section called Statistics. And this web page will change a little bit as we add new information, as we move things around. So if you go back to it and it looks slightly different the next time, um, just know that we're just updating and adding more stuff. Um, and we really want to take a look at our various programs and our services and see whether there is a measurable change in them um, due to um, the COVID-related closures and everything that's going on. So the first thing that we looked at because of the amount of data it has is Montana Library to go. Um, as libraries have had to close their doors and their physical books aren't able to be checked out, we wanted to see about the increases in um, ebooks and e audiobooks. So here is our dashboard that we made in Tableau. Um, so if you look here, this is just a collection information, what we already have. Here's our circulation. Um, so we have up through March. Um, and so we're going to be pulling this on a monthly basis. Um, so I expect that April will be even higher. Um, and you can really see here these new users. This green bar just says huge jump in new overdrive users um, between February and March. And even compared to the rest of the year, it's pretty incredible. Um, and it's really interesting to see how the users are kind of spread out at all of the libraries. You can also see here with our active visits and our page views, just the huge amount, um, the huge increase that we've experienced there. Um, and something else that we're looking at within library to go we're trying to get an idea of the holds. Um, who is requesting what, or 
how much, how many holds are being requested and whether or not we can keep pace with um, providing titles to users who are requesting them. So this is going to change around a bit as we figure out the best way to display it. Um, these are the amount of holds that are on different titles in the collection right now. So across all users and all books, there's almost 60,000 holds. Um, this was as of April 6th. And those holds are spread out on almost 9,000 titles. Um, and here's just the top holds. And we can see where the crawdad's sitting. There's 677 holds on those titles right now. Um, and unfortunately, we only have 45 holds. So we really want to use these numbers to see how we can provide better service and better access. Um, and you can see March, we still have a significant number of new holds placed. So um, 12,224 new holds placed in the month of March and a little over 4,000 titles with holds placed on them. So we're going to be tracking this and adding to it and developing it a little bit more for Montana Library to go. We're also going to be tracking our other programs. So like Talking Book Library Services, um, we're really interested to see if we're going to have an increase in the amount of patrons who are going to use the online um, um, e-book, oh, e-audio book service called BARD. Um, we, in looking at the numbers so far, I haven't had a chance to fully graph them out yet, but um, the BARD numbers for March are still pretty steady. We don't have a significant increase, but we do see a big jump in the amount of the cartridges that were sent out. So kind of like people were preparing to kind of hunker down and wait this out and they requested even more books than usual. So those books that got mailed out, um, they jumped up in numbers a lot. We're also going to be looking at um, the Montana Memory Project and seeing if more people are accessing that and referring to that as well as our state pubs archive. Um, I'm going to be looking at shared catalog numbers, not that anything is circulating right now necessarily, but I think it'd be really interesting to look at the run up to library closures to see how those numbers compare to previous months and previous years. If there's a significant increase um, of people kind of coming in to stock up on books before their local library closed. Um, and I'm also going to be looking at numbers from Joe and from Amelia um, in regards to trading and webinar attendance and seeing the increase that's going to be happening there. Um, so this page will be updated with those dashboards and those graphs as, um, as we get those numbers together and we, we start um, just putting it all together. And um, Let's see. Another thing, we're interested in the increases that you all are experiencing. So if you have a, say a Canopy subscription and you can go in and pull the reports and there's a huge jump in it, um, I think that would be really interesting to track. And so within the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be putting an email out to Wired once I get a bit more of a plan in place um, and kind of putting it out there that if libraries want their data be, to be tracked in a way similar to this, um, I would like to work with you and put something together. Um, so let's see, like databases, if you have story times or other virtual programming that you can track the, um, the attendance on, or if it's on YouTube, the views that you're getting on it, something like that, where we can put some visualization together and um, you can kind of point to it and show how much, how much use your patrons are still getting out of your services and what you're doing, even while the physical building is closed, it's still really worthwhile and um, the patrons really depend on you for these services. So look for that in the next couple of weeks. And um, I think I'm doing a presentation on data visualization. So more stuff like this as part of the um, MLA webinar. So that is coming up on April 30th. Um, and uh, if you're, I'm sorry? That's right, you're, you're on the list. I didn't, oh, perfect. I, could, I couldn't remember the date, but yes. Um, you'll be finding, you'll be getting, you guys should have found that in De Debbie's email and you'll be able to see it on Aspen soon. There was a question from Della who's attending today about um, taking a class on how to make statistics visual, their own statistics, local statistics visual for their board. So that's a good place to start is at that um, webinar. And certainly as, as uh, Jessica said, she's going to be working to try to help you get this, get some material like this that you can share. Mm -hmm. 
Right. So, yes. And I did just want to say, um, if your library is interested in this, but you want to do it yourself, that is wonderful. We use a product. This is a product called Tableau. Um, we here at the library have Tableau Desktop, which is a purchase product, but there is a version called Tableau Public, which is free to use. It doesn't have as much of the fancy stuff, and um, it requires you to host your data and your dashboards online on their site, but it's still pretty powerful and there's a lot of public libraries that do use it. Um, so if you have questions about using that, um, you can always get in touch with me and um, I'm by no means a full expert, but um, it is a really, really great tool to kind of play around with. Um, and I know Tracy had sent out a survey about what services different libraries are offering um, and we are working to figure out a way to um, display that data. Um, so that's not necessarily part of this, but I know Tracy's still working on um, if we're going to have maps or dashboards or graphs to show um, what you all are doing during this time as well. So, Thanks, yeah. Jessica. Sure. I, think this, I think this looks ab absolutely fantastic. I think that um, the numbers probably don't surprise any of us, but to be able to have actual hard data to marry with what we know anecdotally is going to be really, really powerful. Um, I think it's really important for us to be able to talk about our continued services, even at this time. Uh, it's really frustrated me that libraries have gotten mixed into this debate about essential versus non-essential. I don't think that's a helpful conversation to have at all. Uh, as I said before, we're still here serving our patrons and the work that Jessica is doing and the data and information that you are providing can really help convey that message uh, to your boards, to your local governments, to the governor, to the legislature and so forth. So I'm really excited about this. I'm excited to have Jessica doing this kind of work for us. It's so important. I'm excited to know where this goes. We wanted to take just a few minutes and ask you uh, what kinds of other kinds of data and metrics you think might be meaningful as we try to convey both the impact of COVID-19 on library services as well as the work of Montana libraries during this time. And we'll give everybody a little time to respond to that. What kind of what kind of data do you think would be good to be reporting to our stakeholders um, as we move through this historic time we're living in? That's kind of a big question, Jenny. <laughs> oh, here's a good response from Connie. Information about how library use tip typically increases during a recession. Good one. That's well, just really, looking, yeah, really looking, important topic. looking at this increase in holds is pretty traumatic in terms of um, a, a, a big demand, but she also points out that her their physical spaces will likely be in demand. Mm -hmm. I was talking about a recession with someone earlier this morning and I think anecdotally that we have a lot of good information about what happened during the Great Recession and we can't forget that. We need to go back and, and remind ourselves of what that experience was like. Um, but it, be, it would be interesting um, to see some comparative data to, exactly. the, to the last recession to, and exactly. the one that we're about to enter. And, and reminding ourselves that you know, given, given what we experienced before, and how potentially dramatically different and worse the economic impact is right now, what, what we might then expect given what we knew from about a decade ago. Well, great minds must think alike because Connie just posted that it would, to, to take a look at the um, last recession would be helpful for libraries to predict what, um, what they can expect as, as they head back to work and our economy is still in a recession. So, 
And then another comment from Lois, uh, internet access issues. We can't access our online services. Who can't, she said, who can't access our online services? I know you've been um, dancing around that topic for a, quite a while, Jenny, in, in your um, responsibilities to the Public Service Commission. And um, so that is, and I know that the Gigabit Toolkit was an attempt to start to get a bit of a grasp of that issue. Are you are you planning to do anything more with that? You bet, and, and I know that, um, well, there's been a, a couple of, of different efforts. We have the data from the Gigabit Toolkit. Um, you know, in talking to other kinds of policymakers at the state level, it's a little bit frustrating because they're looking to the feds to pass new legislation and, and um, create new funding allocations. And, and while that's certainly helpful, uh, we need to be prepared to, to act now, um, which is why Tracy and I are looking at the issue of uh, hotspots and the availability of, of being able to check out uh, those kinds of tools to give people online access, um, depending on how much funding come, becomes available through the CARE Act. I hope that we can uh, offer that kind of service, even if, even if it's in a limited way. You know that libraries, for example, they're extending their Wi-Fi outside of their physical buildings. Um, some are making hotspots available in other kinds of locations like uh, grocery stores and um, outdoor areas, parks and that kind of thing where, where people are still coming to take advantage of the Wi-Fi. So I think those kinds of options are available. I hope that some libraries might be interested in checking out hotspots to their patrons if we can find enough funding to make those available. So that's what we're, we're working on for the near term and hoping for more options uh, in the longer term. And a comment from Connie in, in, um, in Kalispell, it'd be good to look at information about the library's role in responding to collective trauma after we head back, that we um, maybe plan for collecting that data in advance and then, She's also got a response to your comment about the hotspots that we may give hotspots to an emergency shelter for people mm -hmm. experiencing homelessness. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point. I think this is also an opportunity for us to partner with our healthcare providers who might be wanting to keep in touch with their patients uh, via uh, um, internet controlled medical devices, that kind of thing. So um, I, there's, there's some opportunities for us to partner there. I think dealing with trauma is something that uh, we really want to explore and uh, it's on my list for us to talk about at our, our Wednesday library check-in. So I hope some of you will join us there. Um, but I think you know, given that many of our physical facilities are closed right now, our, I think it's safe to say that our librarians are not necessarily on the front lines. Uh, but I think we can expect to find ourselves on the front lines as our communities start opening up again. And as people want to gather and come together and talk about their shared experiences, um, libraries are community gathering spaces. We are our community's living rooms. And I think and hope that we can um, be comfortable and confident, confident opening up our doors for those kinds of shared conversations. Um, and I think some of that means preparing ourselves and our staff um, to, to put ourselves out there at a time when we're still dealing with um, trying to understand the, the information that we have available and the fear that comes with a, a lack of good information. So those are and the kinds of questions we need to be talking about right now. And from Val, uh, she has a comment about that they are keeping track of every patron that they're serving. Checkouts, Montana Library to Go, reference, Wi-Fi, everything. And so there could be a uh, opportunity to report on some of the um, continuing continuation of services that libraries were able to figure out in, in this in this time. And then also from Della in Shoto about those hotspots that they would definitely want to check them out if they, they would work with the school to make sure students have access. Of course, we have a lot of people who are trying to manage their unemployment um, benefits and maybe um, losing home Wi-Fi as, as they're struggling financially. 
And so that you could see where there could be a need for something like that. That's not what she said. Those are my words. She mentioned the school. And then Stephen over at the law library, um, Stephen, I'm sorry. Um, he'd like to see us collect some stories about what challenged our services. Examples like getting people signed up for unemployment. I know some libraries made the decision to allow people to come into the library to use the computers with a lot of safeguards in place one at a time because it was a great need in their community for them to be able to um, go online to apply for unemployment. Um, also from Debbie, one of the provisions of the third COVID-19 relief bill, the CARES Act, is $3 billion Governor's Emergency Relief Fund for Education Priorities. And MLA, Debbie is of course Executive Director of MLA, has sent a letter to Governor Bullock to ask what that the state use some of this money for all libraries in Montana as we navigate these turbid waters, yes. And then um, let's see, books, book expert. I'm not quite sure who you are, but it's a it's a very cool <laughs> um, title you have there. It may be interesting to do a survey asking patrons how the library is being closed, how the library is being closed has affected them. Yes, that's a great idea. Um, and then also from Connie back in Kalispell, is there grant money available to for Kindles? that we can give out to temporary shelters or to breach that digital divide. Mm. Any response to that, Jenny? Um, we, we are waiting to find out how much, how much funding should be available. And from Shoto Della again, unemployment has been hard because the fax is always busy when I try to send documents for people. Oh, that's interesting. It's an interesting um, sort of from the from the trenches report, Della. Thanks for sharing that. And from Laura, um, Laura Coat, providing patrons with warnings about COVID nineteen related scams, helping to navigate unemployment, getting relief checks. All these things are going to be really important to people in the upcoming weeks. And so Connie was wondering if Della, can you scan and email those? Would that be easier? I don't know, Jenny, did, um, are in your uh, activities at the state level, the over there, at, I know that the Department of Labor and Industry has been trying their darndest to increase their capacity, but they keep maxing out. Um, not sure. I, might be something we can do to help there. Yeah, yeah. at least we can um, reach out and find out what, what we might do or how we might best advise people, how we might best um, get people connected in a way that's most helpful and, and efficient. I know a lot of people at the, at the in early days just, I mean, it just took them forever to get connected. The site kept crashing and I mean, but they went from handling a, a hundred or so of these a day to handling literally thousands. So, and Della was saying people are just mailing them. So she's not sure if they can email them. We'll Troubles. find out what information we can and then and share that out. Yeah, keep keep asking us because I mean, we can, maybe reach out to another state agency and get that information for you. Jenny's really good at that. Not that I'm gonna put everything on your on your table. You have a few things on your plate already, but certainly if that's a problem statewide, maybe there's an, some workaround. Yeah. So I think that's it from the chat box for now. Just wanted to ask Jessica if she had any uh, additional thoughts or comments based on this discussion. You might need to unmute yourself, Jessica. Oh, I unmuted there you one go. part, but not the other. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't have any. We have all really done right that. Now. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm really interested in this feedback, and I think it's a really great start. Um, and I'm definitely interested in hearing more. And like I said, um, I'll be putting something out to Wired within the next couple of weeks. Um, and I might include um, information on their 
I'm not sure if it'll be a survey or what, but what else you would like to see us tracking here? Um, what other things have kind of hard numbers that we can kind of start tracking pretty easily and um, really just showing our impact. Um, and if you have any questions on this dashboard or the dashboards that we'll be adding to this, um, or if you have questions about the data or whether you think there's other parts of this data that you think we should be showing, just please, please feel free to let me know. Um, I know for some of this stuff, so for like the Montana Library to go, for instance, there are a number of reports and um, there might be other stuff in there that you would like to see for your patrons or for your library that we're not really covering. So I'd be really interested in that kind of feedback as well. Um, and yes, and I think I have the chat open. So I see Kelly's message. Um, I believe this is okay to share. This is on our website and it's public facing. So if you would like to share it, um, I think that is okay. Um, unless you feel otherwise, Jenny. Um, I would maybe just put the caveat that this is ongoing. I know I have the little text here in red, um, just so that people know that it will change and it will be modified. Um, and as we get more data, we are going to update this. All right, well, thanks again for joining us. I hope that this was useful information. Uh, lots of stuff for us to be following up on and more that you'll hear about in the coming weeks. I hope to see a lot of you uh, online on Wednesday for our next COVID check-in. Yeah, the COVID check-ins have been great to just kind of give a chance for everybody to kind of share what's going on in their communities, for us to kind of learn from each other. And we've been taking our cues from those to try to um, go out and collect information that everybody needs and then sharing it up at the next meetup. And they have been, they're quite educational. So you actually do get CE credit for attending the, the, uh, the meetup because we're learning, we're all learning a lot in this process. So thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Jessica and Tracy for, for, for your presentations today. And thanks everybody for attending. Thanks, I hope thanks, you will be well and stay safe out there. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.